another video. Um, this will be part four of my dialysis and kidney transplant journey. Um, before we get into this video, y'all know what to do. Comment, like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified and give this video two thumbs up. Um, before we get into this video, I'm going to tell you um, what I'm going to discuss. I've had um, several questions um, regarding dialysis itself. So I'm going to talk about that today. I'm going to show uh, a couple of pictures of my machine and some other pictures on this video, as well as um, I'm going to have a, <clears throat> quite a few videos and pictures to show you of my journey after transplant. So again, like I said, I don't know how many parts it's going to be to this, but tonight I want to just touch bases on, I mean, answering questions, um, going over, you know, being, you know, sanitizing your equipment, washing your hands and stuff like that. So <clears throat> a lot of people um, have questions regarding um, how is it doing dialysis or they're in the middle of making a decision whether to do PD dialysis or hemodialysis. Now the two differences for um, that my understanding, the PD, the PD, the, the peritoneal dialysis, I was able to work a full-time job. Um, I was less, how can I say it? I think there's a different level of tiredness and fatigue with, with, with each treatment, with the hemo versus the PD dialysis. I was tired, but I don't think it was to, at the level where hemodialysis patients are tired. Excuse me. But I think that's one. And then they have to sit in the centers for three to four or five hours. They have to get poked in their arm three days a week they have to uh, they have to have a graft um, in their arm which I've had one I don't know if you all can see the scar I have a scar there it failed there I had two and one up here and those are for your fiscular and that is where the they will input the the needles for the hemodialysis so you have to have, <clears throat> get these, you have to have a, a graph done in order, I mean, what, in order, at the same time that you have the catheter placed. Because if the catheter doesn't work, you will have to have that as backup. Or they'll even put it in your neck. Thus you can see the scar, because ha I had to do hemodialysis when I was, after my transplant. But we'll talk about that later. <clears throat> PD dialysis. My understanding is a lot of people get infections from PD dialysis. I didn't experience that not one time. And I was on PD dialysis for seven years. Now, the reason why I did not get an infection is because, again, following directions, sanitizing your machine, um, washing your hands, making sure the, the um, environment where your machine is kept is clean, dust free so I had to clean the baseboards ceiling fans my bed you know like the your um headboard sometimes you, your headboard can you know can get a lot of dust on it so you have to just make sure you wipe wipe things down no pets in the room you and you basically want to be around the same people too you can't just have people in and out around your equipment and a, a must you're taught how to wash your hands. There's a technique you have to wash your hands for, I think, two to four minutes. Don't quote me on the time because it's been a little while, but you have to wash, you have to scrub your your um, your wrists, both wrists. You have to wash them like this. You have to wash your nails like that, each nail, each side, and you have to go in and out, back and forth. And so, and you really wash your hands. And they used to put like a, um, give us some type of solution because we had to be, we had home visit. I had home visits that the nurse would come out, make sure every the environment was clean, see where I was storing my dialysis boxes, my medicine, um, see how I was <clears throat> keeping my machine. 
um, what else? And just the environment in general, because you have to be very clean. Your hands have to be clean. You didn't, you, I didn't use gloves, cannot use gloves. So you have to make sure your hands are clean. So I would use like a dis, um, antibacterial soap and paper towels to even dry my hands. I couldn't even use towels. You have to wash, wash your shower head once a week with a bleach solution. So I had to do that week, but I did that probably every two nights. But I was in the shower, I would just bleach it and just get it out the way. So you have to just make sure things are clean because you will get an infection because of course your stomach is open and the catheter is running out of your stomach. You gotta be careful not to touch the tip of the catheter. If you do, you have to recap your catheter for 10 minutes and then start the process over again. So the main thing is <clears throat> cleanliness, being very clean, um, washing your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, and don't pick, if you touch anything after you wash your hands, you gotta rewash them. So once you touch the machine, or once you prep to touch the machine, if you touch anything in between that time, you you have to do the process over again. So that means if you touch your eye, your eye itch, if your nose itch, if you touch any parts of your face or any anything around you, you have to start the process over again. So you have to be very careful not to get distracted. Um, make sure you're that's what you're doing. You're you're focused on getting hooked up. So every night it was it was I had to be focused on getting hooked up, have all your supplies ready. You need gauze, because you have to clean the tips of the catheter. You have to clean your site. I had to clean that. You have to clean your site, because of course you wear clothes all during the day, and things are rubbing up against your site. And of course, I wore a bandage and a, a Velcro, some Velcro tape to keep the, the catheter in place. But you have to make sure all that is clean. The second thing, I wore a mask. A lot. So I've, I've been wearing masks hmm, for, I mean, I guess since 2012, I would, you, you must wear masks. So um, and when they deliver your mask, it's a part of your supplies, your mask, your Velcro tape, your sanitizer, your antibacterial soap, all those things were supplied to me. They want to make sure you have that. So that's, that will be a part of your supply list. So you have to call every month to have them to deliver your supplies and things that you're out of. Um, they give you these blue chucks. They will give you, um, not they didn't give gloves, masks, tape, um, hand sanitizer, um, soap, antibacterial soap, gauze, and this other type is a special gauze that you needed for your catheter. It had a little split in it. And it, it, it made it where it would go around the catheter and, and kind of seal together like that. So you would have to order band-aids and stuff like that. Because sometimes my catheter, if I slept wrong or if I turned a certain way, because I'm, it's like it's this long catheter. So there's been a couple of times that I slept wrong and I kind of yanked it out of my stomach. And it'll be bleeding. So I have to get up and, of course, change sheets. Um, it's, 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 it's a lot. So you have to be really careful. Another thing, being on PD dialysis, um, you never know when you're going to have a, a night uh, where you're, you just feel sick. You may have diarrhea. You may have to vomit. And it may happen while you're sleeping. I mean, I've had accidents while I was asleep, and I didn't know. I mean, the medicine some reason I just got sick all of a sudden. So that happens quite often. Um, but you don't have no warning. It's not like you, you, you had a belly ache. It's not like you was nauseated before you went to sleep, but during your, you know, while you're sleeping, it can happen. It can make you very sick. So I would always plan my days, my mornings, but I would get up, I would get on my machine by seven 30 I was on the machine, so by 7 o'clock, I was prepping for it. That means I've eaten dinner, I've already showered, I'm ready for bed. So by 7.30, my machine is running. So, and that was Monday through Thursday. Fridays and Saturdays, excuse me, that was Sunday through Thursday. Friday, I stopped working on Fridays because 
I was getting too tired to drive. And, and sometimes I would even be too tired to chew. You know, it's just a, it's a different type of tiredness. And when you feel that tiredness, you just lay down. That's why it's so important to have a support person with you. So they know that you're laying down because you're just tired. And it's not always that you don't feel good. You're just tired. Sometimes my head will feel heavy. That was a lot. Between chewing and my head feeling heavy, that was probably the most for me. And this, I just had to lay down, just had to rest my head. And I did. I did exactly how my body felt. Um, and I had also, was is another good thing is counseling. They offer you counseling because sometimes people go into a depression about it because it takes so much of your time, um, you know, during the night. I mean, you think 10 hours a night for seven days a week, that's a lot of time. Um, but I thank God that I wasn't like a, you know, I'm not a person just hop, hop around in the ropes, you know, in the streets. And so being home is fine, was fine with me, but it's those times when you have your, your, your family over and, you know, you got to go do what you have to do. So a lot of times they will all just come in my bedroom and we'll laugh and we like to play. Our, you know, we, we are family that like to play games. So we'll play games on my bed and we just made it do what it do. Um, but those times were difficult. But again, you have to have a strong mind and a will to live and get better for your family and for yourself and you can do it. It's doable. It's nothing to be afraid of. And I always thought, you know, I always thought that I think like this. I'm one of God's so God's soldiers. And you know, if you in the army, you have you you are assigned. Everyone has different assignments in the army. So I felt like that this what God put on me, what He gave me. That's my assignment. He ain't gonna put no more on me than I could bear. And he's not going to do it to you either. So that's how I had to think. And, and that was just really, I, that was really trusting God. God, you gave me this assignment. Uh, you must knew that I can bear it because you gave it to me. And just like, like any, if you, if you assign you, your kids, you're not going to assign your, your seven year old to clean the, the freezer out. Cause you know, they can't clean the freezer out or your five year old clean the freezer out. You may assign to your 12 year old because you know, they can probably do it, you know? So <clears throat> that's how I thought about, that's how I looked at it. And I always looked at, I'm very optimistic. So I look at my glass half full, like, you know what? I, I, I just would talk to myself and say, you know, I got it. I got this. And then when you love your family and you love your life, you kind of want to, you know, follow the doctor's orders and do what you have to do to live and just feel better, you know? And I always thought it won't last forever. I always, that's my thought process. We all have to go through things in life, but it ain't going to last forever. Even if you, even, even if I were to have passed away, I wouldn't have known it because it would, it ended. My troubles ended, but in life we live through things. And if you think back 10 years ago, you probably can't remember some of the things, the hardships that you went through, but you got through it, you know? So that's how I had to think. Cause it is a lot. I won't, I won't get up here and, 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 and say that it's not as easy. It is a lot. And you have to have a, you have to have strong minded support people and people that's going to push you. You have to have praying people around you. No negativity. You don't have, you don't need nobody speaking negative. You need people that's praying for you in any situation, not just because you have a kidney disease or anything like that. You need praying people in your life. People that's going to pray for you and lift you up. Regardless if y'all had disagreements, love trumps all of that. When you love somebody, it trumps all arguments. It trumps all disagreements. It trumps all attitudes. So you need somebody in your corner that's going to be praying for you and praying that you get through it. And then you're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days. Just like any other normal person. They have good and bad days. So you have to take your good days and enjoy the heck out of them. And you take your bad days and you just stay on your face in prayer. And that's how, that's how I handled it. And I would also say that um, following doctor's orders and researching for yourself. Do your research. 
do your research. <clears throat> Read anything you are diagnosed with, even if it's not kidney disease. Anything, anything. Do your research. See what you can do to eat, how you can eat better. What you can do to help your situation. How, how, and that's what I'm doing now. What can I do to eat better? What can I do to, to help with some of my, 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 my hemoglobin always stay low. Most ladies, hemoglobin is low because we have a menstrual cycle. But I, I try to eat things. I've gained weight now. I'm taking, I'm on prednisone. If anyone knows about prednisone, I'm on five milligrams of that. And let me tell you something. It makes me so hungry. I, I, I know I, I gained now, I know I've gained like 15 pounds. And so now I'm trying to incorporate eating vegetables and fruits while when I get hungry, like apples and bananas and stuff like that, because some of that medication it really it really puts weight on you and some of it causes your skin to itch. You know, you do a lot of itching when you're on dialysis too. Woo! I mean my back used to itch all the time. I mean my back, so I had bought this lotion. It's called Sarna, S-A-R-N-A, S-A-R-N-A. I think I got it from Walgreens, but it really helped with my itching. And they also have um, a medication for itching too. So if you are on dialysis, you can ask your, your doctor. Is I can't remember the name, but they have some medicine, which makes you kind of sleepy. So it'll help with itching because your skin is very dry when you're on dialysis. Your skin is just dry. You ever see people... That's on hemodialysis. Their their skin turns dark in their face, and they they look really kind of ashy, and and that's that. Excuse me. That's what that dialysis, that hemodialysis, it does that to you. PD may do it over a long period of time, but not as bad as the hemo. Just from my experience, because my you know you sometimes you see um, dialysis patients that's on that does the hemo, they're dark right up in here, or their whole face just turned like a charcoal dark color. That's what I'm talking about. And it looks dry. It looks it never looks like it's hydrated. So that um that's one thing I had to deal with. I had to stay moisturized. I would I would my stomach would flake up. All up here would just be like dry skin, but it would just flake up. And so I had to I got one of those loaves, I think it's called. Um it, it, it kind of exfoliates the skin, so I had to keep those. I had um, shea butter. Uh, what else I was using? Black, um, that black African soap, shea butter, coconut oil, the pure coconut oil. I tried all um, aquaphor, all type of stuff, but it helped, but it doesn't take it away. So you have to make sure you hydrate every every day and just keep your skin moist, moisturized, and um, but it's still dry. It's, mine's still dried out. But that's like that's something you could deal with. You know, that's just something that you have to deal with. Some people have dry skin or eczema without having no kidney disease. But just going over some things that I've experienced. The uh, the other thing too, I stay thirsty. Now when you're on dialysis, they tell you to drink a minimum of thirty two ounces a day. I would be so thirsty. Oh my goodness. So hmm, I bought, I would purchase like sippy cups that have the ounces on it just so I can make, stay in range. But sometimes I went over and I would have to use the highest strength dialysis that night, which cramps you up. But you stay thirsty. And then once I had the transplant, mind you, they want you to drink a lot. I'm not thirsty like that, so I have to force myself to drink now. So it's kind of, it's kind of backwards, but yeah, you stay. I was so thirsty all the time. I was sucking on ice. I craved ice all the time. I was buying that crunchy soft ice. I was buying that by the bagfuls. I kept that in, the, kept that in my freezer. Um, it was just, it, it was just. I mean, just a few things um, that I went through. I'm trying to think of what else that I experienced. The itchiness, the thir excessive thirstiness. You have to do a lot of lab work um, when you're on dialysis. So they and then checking your numbers, uh, which is good because they, it it tells them where you are, what med if they have to adjust your medication because there's a lot of medication adjust adjustments while you're on dialysis. So don't fret that it's okay. 
They're drawing your lab work so that they can make sure you're getting the medication that you need and that the doses, the dosage that you're prescribed is helping you. So don't fret or if they add a medication, honey, I've had medicine increase, dosage amounts increase. I've had added medication to my already, you know, long list of meds, but all that are, all your, your medication is based on your lab results. And those fluctuate. They do not stay the same. They do not stay the same. You want to eat a diet high in protein because you lose a lot of protein when you're on di um, PD dialysis. So you want to try to incorporate <clears throat> a lot of protein. Um, and that's another thing. I didn't crave meats either. I, I had a hard time keeping my protein up because I'm not a big meat eater as it is. But again, going back to chewing... I, 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 cause I, I like lamb, not a fan of steak and I'm not a fan of chicken period, but I would have a little piece of steak, but I'm again, too tired to chew. So it was always what was good for me and, and what, you know, my body, what, how my body tolerated. So that was kind of difficult. So a lot of things I had, I had to do, it was forced because I needed to do it. So you keep your protein up, um, try to drink your 32 ounces. And if you have to get those um, cups that have the, the, the amount of fluids on the side, get those. Um, try to drink your limited amount because that decreases the cramps, especially for the hemo patients. Those cramps are hideous. They're terrible. They, are, they hurt so bad. And again, I had three, three sessions of hemodialysis. So I had, I've experienced both. And again, I have much respect to the ones that are on hemo. I love you and I pray for you because that is tough. That is really tough. Um, <clears throat> and so, again, just continue to um, send me your questions. I think I hit everything because I, I, we, I got questions regarding um, the things that I just discussed. So I hope I covered everything for people, the ones that's, um, that are um, leaving comments. I hope I covered it, and I think, um, and one of the links, we, there's the email address that you can email me, um, and if, even if you need um, someone to just talk to, because we need, we have to encourage each other, and if I can encourage someone, um, and, and the road is not easy, but it is doable, and just know that God didn't bring you this far to leave you, he didn't leave you this far, he didn't bring you this far to leave you. And going back to my story, you a soldier. So he gave certain soldiers certain assignments. And just like some other people have assignments, we probably can't handle. So he didn't give us those assignments. So just know if you fighting any kidney disease, you you that's your assignment. You know, we are in this army. And so that is your assignment. So be encouraged. And like, again, follow doctor's orders, do your research, take your medicine, make sure you're washing your hands, you stand, you're staying sanitary, everything is sanitized, you're um, wearing your mask, wear your mask. And right now with this pandemic going on, wear your mask, wash your hands. When you're coming and going, keep your hands sanitized in your car. I don't care where you go. Sanitize your hands. When people when people come around, if even if they don't give you six feet, you step back six feet. Um, no hugging, no hugging. It's the vaccine is out here now. I'm hopefully it's going to be effective for all of us. But still wear your mask. Still wear your mask because our bodies, our immune system is suppressed. And we are susceptible to anything, not, and not just COVID. When I after my transplant, I got sick, and and I was sick for eight weeks. And it was just a sinus infection. And they told me if you ever get sick after the transplant with these on taking these anti rejection medications, you won't, you know, get well like you normally did, like in a week, maybe four days. It's gonna take six to eight weeks, and they never lie. You have to protect yourself. 
and that's your family, friends, or whoever, you really have to protect yourself. Even if you get vaccinated, protect yourself. Stay clean. If you have to join a support group, there's I, I did, and I, I learned things from the support group. Um, there, there, there. I was with Davida. I know they have um, Fresenius is another dialysis clinic, um, and they have some other cl um, dialysis clinics. I'm sure different names in your area. I was with Davida, very wonderful um, dialysis clinic. Had a wonderful nurse. Um, they took very good care of me, and I try to be the best patient I could be as well. Because for one, I want to live, and I know that I have a purpose. And again, I'm still fighting. I'm still fighting every single day. I'm fighting. I'm praying, I'm pushing, and I'm fighting. And I'm fighting with y'all too. Whoever's dealing with this battle, we're fighting together. And you are in my prayers. I don't know y'all name on this. <clears throat> the people that's watching, I don't know y'all names, but I put I lift y'all up in prayer because God know your name and God know your 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 situation. I don't know, and and everybody's everybody's gonna body is gonna react different to everything, even this vaccine. You hear one story from this person, one story just like dialysis, PD hemo PD dialysis. I can only tell you what I experienced. And I hope that it helps you, but everybody is different. Just like people told me certain things. Some things I didn't experience, some things I did. You know, so it's all, everybody's different. I can only tell you what you can expect and what I went through. And I am still going through. I, I'm still going through. I'm still not back to work. They haven't cleared me to go back to work. This is as long as I've ever been out of work. But I've learned to be okay with that too. I'm Okay. Because I know God has me. God has me. He did not bring me this far to leave me. So, I'm going to end this video. But know that you are all in my prayers. And we're going to get through this. And if, like I said, if y'all need to talk, y'all need to email me. If I didn't cover anyone's question that <clears throat> that um, that did comment, just remind me. I would, I would definitely, I, even if I have to email you back your answer, however I can help. However, however, I can encourage you, but just know that you're in my prayers and no prayers go that people can't go. But my prayers are, are being heard. God is answering my prayers. But again, follow doctor's orders, be compliant, and make sure you're <clears throat> sanitary. Make sure everything is clean. You're using your hand sanitizer. You're washing your hands. You're wearing your mask and you're taking your medication as needed as, as you're supposed to do. So, until next time, you guys, Mama Bree love y'all. Have a wonderful night, and I'll be back. And I have so much other stuff to show you guys, so much, so many pictures, so many videos. And so, we're um, Prissy and, and, and No Chef DJ, they are compiling everything for me, so I have to approve it. But, yeah, I'm going to show you my journey. I'm going to show you my journey. And, you know, this family, my family is transparent um, because that's the only way we know how to be is transparent because we are all going through something. Your problem may be different, but we, we are all the same. And we all deal with the same issues. And we all make bad choices, good choices. Some work for us, some don't. So we are one and the same. So we'll always be a transparent family because we love y'all. And people need realness. People need genuine people, people that's, that's down to earth, people that's not, you know. Because one thing I could tell y'all, like I told y'all, I think in my last video, money can't, buy, <clears throat> uh, money can't buy your health. I'm telling you. You can have all the money. I don't care the bad, the biggest house. And you, and you don't need no big old house because you, you only can sleep in one room and one bed at a time. So it doesn't even matter if you, if you're not healthy or your health is declining, you don't even have a quality of life. So it doesn't even matter. So at the end of the day, what we do for each other, how we encourage each other, how we pray for each other, how we lift each other up, that's what counts. And that's what God is looking at. God ain't looking at what kind of car we got or house or how much jewelry we got or how much money we got in the bank. He don't care about that because he owned it all. He owned it all. So my reward is 
serving God's people. That's 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 my reward. That's 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 that pleases me. Serving God's people and helping God's people. That's that makes me happy. Period. That's my purpose. We all here to serve, but sometimes we are self-serving. But we all here to serve and help one another. So I love you. You're constantly in my prayers. And again, if I did not cover what you um any questions that you had, just send me a message and um I'll send you an email back. And until next time, bye-bye and have a wonderful night. I love y'all.